the great Leonid meteor storm of 1833. The sky lit up so bright, people thought their homes were on fire. We're heading into the Leonid meteor shower in a few days. They usually take place around mid-November every year. The image in the painting shows a depiction of the great Leonid meteor storm that took place November 13, 1833. At that time, more than 72,000 meteors per hour fell to Earth. And according to one observer, caused the night sky to radiate so bright with falling stars that people were awakened, believing that their houses were on fire. The Leonid meteor shower is one of the 10 biggest meteor showers of the year. Every 33 years, it becomes even more intense as the comet Temple Tuttle, 55P Temple Tuttle, makes its closest approach to the Earth and the Sun. The great meteor of the Leonids, the storm of 1833, though, was unusually prolific. It became one of the most spectacular astronomical sights ever seen in modern era, many people believing the world was coming to an end. It occurred at a time before electric streetlights, and the moon had set in the early evening, providing North America with an unobstructed view of this celestial phenomenon. So needless to say, the, to say, the story goes, was a picked up version, varying newspapers reporting that the night the stars fell with the following description of the Wall family experiencing, give it an insight into the thought feelings of witnesses there, reported by Bruna McGuire and Betty Wall, and they explain, the stars showered down so thickly and fast that it looks as though every star in heaven was falling. When they touched the ground, they burst and drifted away. Stars were still falling when the sun rose the next morning. Never before had there been such a sight witnessed, nor has there been since the greatest meteoric display of our age. Now the Leonids prolific meteor shower, as we said, with comet Temple Tuttle are associated. These spectacular meteor storms occur every 33 years. Earth moves through a meteoroid stream of particles left from the passage of a comet. The stream comprises solid particles known as meteorites ejected by the comet as its frozen gases vapor evaporate under the heat of the sun when it's close enough, typically closer than Jupiter's orbit. The Leonids are fast-moving stream which encounter the path of Earth and impact at 72 kilometers per second. Larger Leonids are about 10 millimeters across, have a mass of half a gram, and are known for gener generating bright apparent magnitude 1.5 meteors. The annual meteor shower may deposit 12 or 13 tons of particles across the entire planet. 12 to 13 tons of particles every year. The annual Leonid shower. The meteoroids left by the comet are organized in trails in orbit similar to, though different from, that of the comet. They are differentially distributed by the planets, in particular Jupiter, and to a lesser extent by radiation pressure from the Sun. The pointing robertson effect and the Yarkovsky effect. We know the Yarkovsky effect. That's when uh, the Sun's rays heat up the uh, surface of the object, the meteor, the asteroid, forcing it to act as if it's rotating in space, it rotates on its axis because of the temperature differential by an anisotropic emission of thermal photons which carry momentum and it is unusually considered in relation to meteoroids or small asteroids. It influences the most significance of these bodies 
And that's what happened July 25th. A small asteroid about 40 feet across was supposed to pass us beyond our moon and go directly into space. Well, it didn't because of the Yarkovsky effect on its uh, surface. It tumbled on its axis and it came careening into the Caribbean Ocean. Thank goodness it did not fall into any city or any populated area. It fell into the ocean. Now, these trails of meteoroids cause meteor showers when Earth encounters them. Old trails are spatially not dense and compose a meteor shower with a few meteors per minute. In the case of Leonids, that tends to peak around November 18, but some are sp spread through several days on either side of the specific peak changes every year. Conversely, young trails are spatially very dense and the cause of meteor outbursts when the Earth enters one. And the Leonids also produce meteor storms, large outbursts every 33 years, which exceed a thousand meteors per hour, in contrast to the sporadic background five to eight meteors per hour and the shower background several an hour. A thousand per hour are the Leonids. Now, the history of the 1800s, the Leonids are famous because their meteor showers or storms can be among the most spectacular. Because of the storm of 1833 and the recent developments in scientific thought of the time, see, for example, the identification of Halley's Comet, the Leonids have had a major effect on the development of scientific study of meteors, which had previously been thought to be atmospheric phenomena. Although it has been suggested the Leonid meteor shower and storms have been noted in ancient times, it was the meteor storm of 1833 that broke into people's modern day awareness. It was of truly superlative strength. One estimate of the peak rate is over 100,000 meters per hour. But another done as the storm abated estimates an excess of 240,000 meteors during the nine hours of the storm over the entire region of North America east of the Rocky Mountains. It was marked by several nations of Native Americans. The Cheyenne established a peace treaty and the Lakota calendar was re reset. Abolitionists included Harriet Tubman and Frederick Douglass, as well as slave owners took note, and others. The New York Evening Post carried a series of articles on the event, including the reports from Canada to Jamaica. It made news in several states beyond New York, and though it appeared in North America, uh, it was talking about it was talked about in Europe. The journalism of the event tended to rise above the partisan debates of the time, and reviewed facts as they could be sought out. Abraham Lincoln commented on it years later. Near Independence, Missouri, in Clay County. A refugee Mormon community watched the meteor shower on the banks of the Missouri River after having been driven from their homes by local settlers. The founder and first leader of Mormonism, Joseph Smith, afterwards noted in his journal his belief that this event was a literal fulfillment of the word of God and a sure sign that the coming of Christ was close at hand. Though it was noted in the Midwest and Eastern areas, it was also noted in the Far West. Denison Olmsted explained the event most accurately. After spending the last weeks of 1833 collecting information, he presented his findings in January 1834 to the American Journal of Science and Arts, published in January to April 1834 and January 1836. He noted the shower was of short duration and was not seen in Europe, and that the meteors radiated from a point in the constellation of Leo, and he speculated the meteors had originated from a cloud of particles in space. Accounts of the 1866 repeat of the Leonids counted hundreds per minute, a few thousand per hour in Europe. The Leonids were again seen in 1867, when moonlight reduced the rates to a thousand per hour. Another strong appearance of the Leonids in 1868 reached an intensity of 1,000 per hour in dark skies. It was in 1866 uh, and 67 that information on comet Temple Tuttle was gathered, appointing it out as a source of the meteor shower. 
when the storms failed to return in 1899, it was generally thought that the dust had moved on and storms were a thing of the past. Then, in 1966, a spectacular storm was seen over the Americas. Historic, historical notes were gathered, thus that noting that the Leonids back to 900 AD. Radar studies showed the 1966 storm included a relatively high percentage of smaller particles, while 1965's lower activity had a much higher proportion of larger particles. In 1981, Donald K. Yeomans of the Jet Repulsion Laboratory reviewed the history of meteor showers of the Leonids and the history of the dynamic orbit of Comet Temple Tuttle, and a graph from it was adapted and republished in Sky and Telescope magazine. It showed relative position of the Earth and the Temple Tuttle and marks where Earth encountered these dust, the dense dust. This showed that the meteoroids are mostly behind and outside the path of the comet, but paths of Earth through the cloud of particles resulting in powerful storms were very near paths of nearly no activity. But overall, in 1998, Leonids were in favorable position, so interest was rising. And leading up to 1998 return, an airborne observing ca campaign was organized to mobilize modern observing techniques by Peter Jeniskins at NASA Ames Research Center. There were also efforts to observe impacts of meteoroids as an example of transient lunar phenomena on the moon in 1999. The particular reason to observe the moon is that our vantage from a location on Earth sees only meteors coming into the atmosphere relatively close to us, while impacts on the moon would be visible from across the moon in a single view. The sodium tail of the moon tripled just after the uh, 1998 Leonid shower, which was composed of larger meteoroids, which in the case of the Earth was witnessed as fireballs. But in 1999, the sodium tail of the moon did not change from the Leonid impacts. Research by Kondrat Eva Reznikov and colleagues at Kazan University shows, showed the meteor storms could be accurately predicted, but for some years, the worldwide meteor community remained largely unaware of these results. And the work of David J. Asher, Arma Observatory, and Robert McNaught Siding Spring Observatory, and independently by Esko Litinen in 1999, following on from the Kazan research, is considered by most meteor experts as a breakthrough in modern analysis of meteor storms. Whereas previously it was hazardous to guess if there would be a storm or little activity, the predictions of Asher and McNaught timed bursts in activity down to 10 minutes by narrowing down the clouds of particles to individual streams from each passage of the comet and their trajectories amended by subsequent passage near planets. But whether a specific meteoroid trial, trial uh, will be primarily composed of small or large particles, and thus the relative brightness of the meteors was not understood, but McNaught did extend the work to examine the placement of the moon with trails and saw a large chance of a storm impacting in 1999 from a trail, while there was less direct impacts from trails in 2000-2001. In the 2000s, viewing campaigns resulted in spectacular footage from 1991, 2001, 2002. Storms produced up to 3,000 landed meteors per hour, 3,000 an hour. Predictions from the Moon's Leonid impacts are also noted. In 2000, the side of the Moon facing the stream was away from the Earth, but the impacts should be in number enough to raise um, a cloud of particles kicked off the Moon by impacts would cause a detectable increase in the sodium tail of the Moon. Research using the explanation of meteor trials and streams have explained the storm of the past. The 1833 storm was not due to the recent passage of the comet, but from a direct impact with the previous 1800 dust trail. 
the meteoroids from the 1733 passage to Comet Temple Tuttle resulted in the 1866 storm. And the 1966 storm was from the 1899 passage of the comet. The double spikes in limited activity in 2001 and 2 were due to the passage of comet's dust ejected in 1767 and 1866. This groundbreaking work was soon applied to other meteor showers. For example, in 2004, June Butids, Peter Jenkinson, published predictions for the next 50 years. But a close encounter with Jupiter was expected to perturb the comet's path, and many streams making storms of historic magnitude unlikely for many decades. Recent work tries to take into account the roles of differences in parent bodies and the specifics of their orbit, ejection velocities off the solid mass of the core of the comet, radiation pressure from the sun, and the pointing Robertson effect and the Yarkovsky effect on the particles of different sizes and rates rotating uh, of rotation to explain differences between meteor showers in terms of being predominantly fireballs or small meteors. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.